Hi everybody, good morning. I wanted to switch gears a little bit here after learning about Lincoln and emancipation and, um, and the Gettysburg Address and go back to research. So uh, these next two lesson, uh, lessons will be regarding your research for your research project, which don't worry about the end product at this point um, because we're still just in that point place of gathering research, which I actually really like being able to be in this place. So we started off and I said, just be curious and ask all your questions and start to do purposeful Googling, I guess we'll say, you know, purposeful research, looking for uh, articles that uh, are interesting, are able to read, are reliable, gather those up, start to take note on, notes on those and start to learn about the topic. That's kind of where you should be. And I've heard some really interesting things people have said, I heard, um, someone was saying they wanted to do religion and how religion was justified, was used to justify slavery. That's a fascinating topic. I know some other people are interested in doing spies. Obviously I find that fascinating. So I'm glad you're starting to find a variety of interesting topics and hope, hopefully by now you have something that you're interested in and that you on some level want to learn more about. Um, so I'm gonna stick with uh, women spies. And I'm gonna present now so you guys can see my research that I found. Share screen, it's the green button. What's wrong with me? I haven't had my coffee yet. Okay, so um, I don't know what this is. I'm just gonna close that. So I have found four articles on female spies that I'm gonna use uh, throughout, uh, and I've done a variety of different like reading and skimming and sort of thinking about what I want to do. So there are, um, there are a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of articles about the actual names of the women, uh, of the like famous women spies. So that's something that I find students kind of fall into the trap of where they find articles that are all the same. And that doesn't get you very far, right? If they all have basically the same information. So there's like, probably 10 to 15 articles that are easy to find that are all about the most famous female spies of the Civil War. You only need one of those, maybe two, because they're gonna say the same thing. They're like kind of short articles and they're an overview of the women's lives and they're not gonna have a lot of new information. But I have one that's on that, I, I kept one. If I need to fill in more information, I'll go back and find another one, but for now I'm just gonna stick with this, with this one. So I have an article on Women Spies in the Civil War. Then I have a more general article about women spying in the Civil War. It does mention some of them in particular, but it also asks, it also um, talks about, oh, I'm sorry. That's the other one. This one um, is how, it really goes into how they did it. And I, and I definitely had other information in there. Um, so it talks about them using fans. It talks about them using um, objects to smuggle information. Some lady spies made small holes in their eggs, sucked out their innards, and tucked messages inside their intact shells so they could like have, send a dozen eggs and they would have messages inside of them. So this is more methods, which I thought I found really interesting, and it does talk a little bit more about the specific women. So we have. Um, who they are and then some of their methods and then this was more um, more generally about how women's spies helped the war effort so like how they were helpful and what what are some of the ways in which they specifically like helped do things um, so this is uh, this is getting a little bit more specific into that then in my research one thing I found was that information about what life was like as a woman during this time period. Cause I kind of run out of, of like directions to go in with the female spies because they were all the, everything was so similar. It was all, I was getting a lot of the same information, but then one article had that I read had mentioned that um, the, you know, they were living during the Victorian age, which I know is a really oppressive time for women um, where there was like tons of like super strict moral rules. And so I thought, well, that would be an interesting paragraph to sort of um, kind of counteract against the paragraphs on 
um, female spies is a paragraph about what life was like and what the expectations for a woman were during this time period. So I'm going to include, and I keep saying paragraph guys. I know I keep saying paragraph. It's just the way my brain goes section. We really want to think more like section, um, a section on what life was like for a woman, like probably to kind of introduce everything. So I have a, um, I have an article on that. So as you can see, I, I have narrowed it down to just four, knowing maybe I'm going to go back and find more um, to fill this out. But I, uh, but they're all different. And that's the key thing here. If you come back and you're doing weapons of the Civil War and you have four articles on cannons, essentially you have one source because you just have a bunch of information about cannons. Maybe you can write an entire paper or do an entire project on cannons but you're gonna to have to get really, really into the details of it. And that's pretty challenging. It's, it's much more challenging than having subtopics of information. So that brings us to what you're going to do today is you're going to fill out this organizer uh, that I have here. And it's gonna have your subtopic and then it's gonna have where these sources are located. Uh, so my, my topic is, um, Women, spies in the Civil War. And then I have the subtopic of, um, of uh, life for women during the time period. Ah, ah, go away. Dr. Drop, there we go. Victorian age. And then I have the subtopic of, I feel like you're probably having a hard time hearing me, right? Because I'm typing, but you can see me, so that's good. Um, different famous uh, and lives of famous female spies. Methods used by female spies. Okay, and you know what? I'm, I'm realizing I'm going to add another, um, add another uh, row to this. No, column, I mean, insert to get um, another topic in here. And I'm going to leave you guys for two um, ways in which women helped or effort. So I have my four topics, subtopics that I'm going to cover. These could be very different than what I, I have put here. I could have women spies in the Civil War and I could just have picked four different women spies that I'm gonna really study in depth. And I could have the name, um, the name that I kept seeing come up was this Rose Greenhow. She could be, I could do my entire paper on Rose Greenhow right here. Go away little thing. Right here, instead of women's size in the Civil War, I could have Rose Greenhow. And for subtopic, I could have early life, married life, um, political beliefs, examples, you know, stories, and, and then tell stories of how she died in the Civil War. Um, I could have just four different famous um, Civil War spies. I could have, um, I could have just in general spies of the Civil War, and then I could have women spies of the Civil War, Union spies, Confederate spies. There's a lot, there's no one right answer for how to organize your research, especially when I'm giving you so much freedom. But at a certain point, you have to organize it and you have to kind of like get it, get it together and get it into an organized fashion in your head so you know what your different topics are going to be. So this is how I have made, it made sense based on what research I had found. But there is a lot of different ways to make this to make sense. And, and for those of you who are doing this same topic, you, you will probably find a different way to organize your research. Even if you use this exact same 
template that I've laid out, you're going to have different sources, I would imagine. And so then you're going to have it's going to be different. So just think about logically based on the information you have, how are you going to organize your research? Um, this, and, and just to be clear, this requires reading. I did a fair amount of reading. Now I know I cheated and I don't have these all um, annotated because I've already been to seventh grade. Um, but that is one thing that my that yours should be annotated because you've read them. Um, but I've done the reading. Uh, if they're not annotated now, they will be in the future. Um, and I thought through them and I, I comprehended them. That is a step that has to happen. So make sure you've done that, especially if you're having a hard time. Uh, then for this bottom part, you are going to put the link for the articles where they would belong. So names and lives of famous female spies would go here. You may have two sources underneath one of these subtopics. You may have a subtopic that will go um, into multiple locations. You may have one article that, that is in every location. Oftentimes a Wikipedia entry, although we don't love Wikipedia, it can go into four different areas because it has so much information. So you may have one that's for all of your subtopics, but then you should have other sources as well. Okay, that's it for the research. That's what you need to get done. Tomorrow, we're going to talk about finalizing all of our notes and getting them all together. And then next week, we'll actually begin the project and really begin the writing portion of this. So um, just have, you know, you really have to be working on getting all that research, annotating it, and organizing it into the organizer. All right. Thanks, guys.